Let's get out from the AV receiver menu. 4K 120Hz, HDR, VRR, 10-bit RGB from the Xbox Series X. Boom! Hello everyone, Vincent Theo from HDTV Test here. Here I have a pre-production sample of the Onkyo RZ50, a new AV receiver which is equipped with the latest HDMI 2.1 chipset that is meant to be free from the HDMI 2.1 incompatibility bugs that affected last year's AV receivers. So I'm going to obviously test it out, you know, using all the HDMI 2.1 sources that I have here, namely a PS5 and Xbox Series X and also an RTX 3090 card. I know I'm quite lucky. If I can summon the user menu on the Onkyo RZ50, and if I go into TV out and go down to HDMI 4K 8K signal format, you can see that I've set most of these inputs to 8K enhanced, which is necessary to unlock the highest HDMI 2.1 bandwidth that this receiver is capable of. Now, this AV receiver has three HDMI 2.1 inputs that can support up to 40 gigabits per second, and those are going to be the first three HDMI inputs, namely BD DVD, game, and also cable satellite. It will also have three HDMI inputs that will support up to 24 gigabits per second, but we are primarily concerned with the first three, which can support up to 40 gigabits per second. And I've hooked up, basically, I think, the Xbox Series X to the second input game, and then the PS5 to the first input BD DVD, and then my RTX 3090 card gaming PC to my third input, which is cable satellite. And also, this receiver will have two HDMI 2.1 outputs. But what I'm going to do is to get out from this user menu, get back into the Xbox Series X dashboard screen. And before I forget, the Xbox Series X is being routed through the AV receiver, and then the HDMI out from the AV receiver is connected to this LG 65-inch C1 OLED that I'm testing at the moment. So let's start. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and then I shall show you the freezing information bar on this TV. And you can see that originally it was in SDR because you know the dashboard is in SDR, but hopefully you can see that it has kicked into HDR and we have an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, basically 10 gigs at 4 lane, you know, 10 bit in HDR, and it also supports VRR with a fluctuating refresh rate UHD 120Hz resolution. So I think you know the main problem is with Call of Duty servers currently. But if I can quit that you can see that you know there is no graphics dropout, there is no black screen, there is no error message saying that there's no signal. So basically this AV receiver is passing the video signal and also I've tested the audio very briefly as well. There is no audio dropout so the signal is passing through fine from the Xbox Series X with all the necessary key HDMI 2.1 elements intact, which means that it will be able to pass through UHD resolution 120 frames per second, 10 bit RGB with VRR in HDR to the TV, which is very, very good news indeed. Now, what we'll do is to switch to the PS5, and if I can actually press BD DVD on the remote control, which will switch the source. And currently it is not displaying any signal, I think. But that's probably because you know, my PS5 is not on. And now that it has come back to life, you can see that it is basically reaching the maximum HDMI 2.1 bandwidth that the PS5 is capable of, which is 32 gigabits per second. And if we start a game that can support up to 120 frames per second, which is Dirt 5, I think that obviously I pointed out a few days ago that Ratchet & Clank is being output in 120 hertz from an internally rendered 60 frames per second. I think they have patched it, which is why I'm using Dirt 5 again now. And hopefully, you know, I will be able to show you that it is running at 120 frames per second once I set the high frame rate mode to on inside the 
settings screen in Dirt 5. I don't know why I'm actually showing you PS5, but you know, I just want to show you that you know, indeed the PS5 is still working as well, because I think the PS5 has worked with even the buggy AV receivers from last year anyway, but you know, it is reassuring to know that in addition to the Xbox Series X working, this has not broken the PS5, and you can see that with high frame rate mode selected, we are getting UHD resolution at 120 frames per second. You know, there is no VR support on the PS5. And then because the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth on the Sony PS5 is capped at 32 gigabits per second, we are getting YCBCR 422. And the reason why it is reading 8-bit is because, you know, to a sync device, a sync device is basically the TV uh, YCBCR422 package, you know, the sync device cannot tell whether it is 8-bit, 10-bit or 12-bit and conservatively, LG TVs always report it at the lowest level which is 8-bit but in reality, it is likely to be 12-bit and if we get out from here and so, that is from the PS5 point of view and last but not least, let's go to the third input which is my RTX 3090 graphics card and if I can go there and you can see straight away that you know we are getting 40 gigabits per second and I think you know my PC has gone into screensaver mode and if I can get into there and you know it's supporting G-Sync as well and let's say if I try to force HDR to be on and then if I can start this G-Sync Pendulum demo. Now to me, there is some stuttering right at the beginning, but as the frame rate stabilizes, you know, it is buttery smooth. And I think, you know, from this footage, you can't really tell because, you know, YouTube doesn't support VRR and therefore, you know, you can't actually see what I mean about the buttery smoothness of VRR. But you can see that once I actually, you know, summon this test pattern inside the G-Sync Pendulum Demo app, it is buttery smooth to my eyes and you can see the frame rate fluctuating nicely. And, you know, it is utilizing the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second with 10 bit, with RGB, HDR, VRR, and, you know, at UHD 120 frames per second resolution. So there is no problem. So. From the point of view of all three main HDMI 2.1 sources, you know, I'm very happy with the performance of this Oncure RZ50. Obviously, you know, I've not gone into the audio testing side of things and, you know, I'll leave it to some other YouTube channels or some other publications that do technical audio measurements. But from the video side, you know, I'm satisfied that this RZ50 is indeed compatible with all the three main HDMI 2.1 sources on the market today, namely the Xbox Series X, the Sony PS5, and also the RTX 3090 card. And I think, you know, obviously some of you will point out the fact that there is another source of HDMI 2.1 video, and that is the AMD cards. But, you know, unfortunately, I don't have one at the moment, and I think that I'm already fairly broke, you know, paying for all these HDMI 2.1 sources. But, you know, well done to Onkyo, you know, for coming out with such a product because I think, you know, if this product is going to hit the market, let's say late July, early August, it may be the first on the market to be able to work with the Xbox Series X without requiring an outboard converter box or let's say a firmware update later in the future or even a hardware change you don't need to send your unit in to have a hardware board change and be without your every receiver you know this will work out of the box obviously this is currently only a pre-production sample but i've been reassured by the u.s distributor who kindly sent me this pre-production sample and i think you know they have other brands under their wings as well so 11 trading company is the u.s distributor for Onkyo, Pioneer and Integra and from this chart here you can see that they have other models which also will have three HDMI 2.1 inputs that support up to 40 gigabits per second and two HDMI 2.1 outputs that support up to 40 gigabits per second and I think that this is going to be very useful 
to some of you lucky viewers who own you know more than one hdmi 2.1 sources and i think seriously this is a situation that reminds me of how the lg c9 had the first hdmi 2.1 ports in terms of the televisions on the market and they had such a head start and this may give onkyo and pioneer integra a small head start it is not as massive a gap as let's say what lg enjoyed for the best part of one year but i think you know the fact that they have a working pre-production sample that i've tested means that you know this has catapulted onkyo and pioneer integra straight to the head of the class in terms of you know let's say if you are considering buying an av receiver to support all your hdmi 2.1 sources you know this must be near the top of your consideration so very well done to the company especially considering what they've been through over the past couple of years now how has onkyo managed to achieve this now obviously i think you know they say that they are using a totally different chipset which is the latest and greatest so i used my old technique of picking through the hole you know that's not something i really do these days these days i just pay but you know if i peep through the hole you can see that the Panasonic chipset from Nuverton is different from the one I saw on previous AV receivers in 2020, which had the HDMI 2.1 bug. If you'd like to watch more videos on HDMI 2.1 sources, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.